Welcome guys, we're here at Boomtown. Um, this is another edition of Metal Shop Vlogs on the road. Did you hear that? Oh, it's on folks, don't worry about that. Uh, I'm here with uh, my friend Hector. Uh, he's kind of like my boss too. Um, but uh, you were the uh, owner of uh, Boomtown. How, was, uh, how, did, how did that come about? Uh, how did you think, I want bar, I want this, and I want this area. Like, how did that come about? Um, to be honest, so I'm not the only owner here at Alfred of Campos. Uh, Monarch is also an owner here. And uh, we were both, like, I uh, used to have a restaurant downtown called Hello Day. And after... Oh, that was yours. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, once I was out of there, we started looking around and we really wanted to do something in Central. I mean, I've always loved this area. Um, I didn't grow up in this area, but my second apartment was in Central, right here on Maple in Montana. And you know, then I lived on now, I lived at different spots, you know, different parts of it. And uh, just always loved it. And, you know, you could tell that it was kind of like, uh, like downtown is. This is also kind of like an up and coming area. You can start to feel the changes happening and everything, which is also where the name came from. It's like, yeah, I was just about to ask, yeah. like, why, like, Boomtown? Like, when I first heard of it, I was just like, was that like a different section of, like, El Paso? <laughs> it's no, of, yeah, it's uh, actually an old term that uh, was used in Texas for, like, oil towns. Oh, okay. So whenever they would discover there was, like, a lot of oil, like, let's say Marfa, for example, was was in the 1920s, a Boomtown. Oh, okay. And so that just meant it was almost like a gold rush kind of town. Like so this, this, is is spot. this is a new spot, guys. Yeah. Let's go. Okay, okay, so it's, it's a little bit tongue in cheek, um, but it also this is also like a working class kind of environment. Um, you know, we cater to a lot of like artists and stuff like that that maybe aren't like huge nationally recognized, making tons of money kind of people. You know, so uh, so it has that kind of like blue collar kind of feel to it too. And uh, but it's a little bit of cheek. Some, some music. I, see, I didn't, I didn't know about that. Now I know. Now yeah. I know. <laughs> um, obviously, I mean, uh, like you were saying, I mean, it has, has this, uh, it's like a very homey feeling. I mean, like you get here, like, you know, the first first time I was here, I was just like, back to playing the living room. It just feels like a living room, you know what I mean? Um, what, do you know what this used to be before? Like, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, it was a bar. Before yeah. it was a bar. Originally, originally it was a residence, but I don't know if people, Realized, but in the 1970s, this entire district down here became kind of like an experiment where they rezoned the entire district and made everything like residential slash commercial. So that's why you see like this area of Montana houses that are now like law offices, actually right across the street from us, Danny Rezo's law office, but it's a house. You know? Right. And so you can basically live in a space or use it as a workspace, or you can live in the back and work in the front. I want to live in that back apartment. You're like, you're like told me no. Everybody does. You're just like, no. No, yeah, so uh, so it originally was that, and then I believe in 1974 was when the owner turned it into a bar. Um, he ran the bar for, I want to say, 12 years, until, from what he tells me, he had to make a choice. It was either his bar or his family. So <laughs> he decided to keep his family. And uh, started. I don't know. That was a smart move. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, he's uh, he's cool. And uh, but then he actually split up the place at that point because he couldn't find anybody to take over the whole place. So there was actually like this was a bar, and then the upstairs was an apartment, separate residence, and then there was a totally separate business running the back for 20 years or whatever. So we were actually the first people to take the whole thing back over and use the entire space, utilize the entire thing. Good. Yeah. Right, I'm sure everybody wants to know uh, what type of drink specials do you guys have? Um, what do you guys have like a different selection of beers or like, you know, like very specific ones or like you know any type of special drinks you guys have specifically for Booktown? What's going on there? Yeah, I mean we have. Uh, I mean we open at 5 p.m. so we do our happy hour at 5 to 8. Um, we basically drop all of our well drinks down to three bucks. All of the draft goes down to 350, so that includes like all of our drafts except for Lone Star. It's all craft beer, so you can get like a normally five to seven dollar beer for 350. You said that was Angry Hour, right? No, that's Happy Hour. That's Happy Hour. Yeah, but yeah. What, what, I, what I keep on hearing about is Angry Hour. I'm yeah, pretty yeah. sure I was a part. I mean, I was like, you know, like 
bought some stuff and I got out. But how did that come about? Just you know, flip around? Or? Well, yeah, you know, it's like I kind of felt like earlier in the day, like you get out of work, you need like a happy hour, to get a little more motivated, whatever. So we do that from five to eight, and then we have a break from eight to ten, and then we have an angry hour, which starts from ten to twelve, and those are all like your darker liquors, your you know. The drink special is a dark and stormy, like everything's just a little bit darker, a little bit yeah. angrier. Yeah. Like, oh, this is good. I'm in Boomtown now. This is delicious. Yeah. So, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, what about, um, I know, uh, this is kind of like, you know, the, one of the main things for, for Boomtown, I'm pretty sure everybody's been, been to at least one show here, but I mean, this is a live venue. Man. There's bands that come in here basically every day. Sure. I'm surprised there's not a band playing right now. Man. Yeah. And, um, but how did that um, how did that business decision come? And like, you know, what special stuff you know, happens? And like, uh, let's just say, like, what, what bands have come through here? You're just like, oh crap, we have you know, Slayer here, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <I wish. laughs> um, no, I mean, it's just, it's just been like a part of my life since I was a teenager. You know, I started going to shows when I was or like backyard shows when I was 13, 14, you know. And it's just been a part, and I've seen like people transform, you know, their dad's, uh, you know, mechanic garage into a venue. I've seen people turn their, uh, you know, their, also the dad's uh, junkyard into a venue, all that kind of stuff, because back then, there weren't places like this. So we had to figure out, you know, there was a Hawaiian shave ice on Montwood that became a venue, you know, the parking lot became a venue, that yeah. kind of thing. So, you know, that's like what I grew up with and that's what I've been a part of. And, you know, then I, I left, I was living in Berlin for a long time. And then you also see there that, you know, people just make things happen with very little. They just, it's about the culture. It's not really about having the fanciest light fixtures. It's not about having the most expensive seating that's in perfect condition all the time, all that kind of stuff. Out there, it's just like underground DIY. Let's just get in the space, bring it up to code. Start giving cool yeah. stuff in there. So. Actually, actually, um, there, there's a. I just need to tell you, there's a there's some mail over there that's kind of <laughs> sticking out. It hit me in the back. So you know, yeah, that's part of the that's part of the. Chart. It's the rustic. It's the that's the <laughs> rustic thing, right? Um, what about um? I mean, how long have you guys already been open? Um, uh, we've been open a little over a year. So May first was a was a year. So May year couple months ago. And I'm sure within all that time frame, like you've already gotten your regulars that come through here. Like how does yeah sure. How does uh, how do you feel like you know, like, you know for it to be so, such a success and be like, hey, I know you, what's up? Here's your I I already know what you're gonna order. Like, how does that Yeah, sure. I mean it's kind of interesting here because of the neighborhood. Uh, we get a lot of regulars for the early on when we first opened that kind of happy hour time. It's a little bit more like the professionals that live in the area or like the guys from the mechanic shop, like all that kind of stuff, they come over. We all know that, like the office people across the street. It's kind of cool because it mixes, you know. There's like, you know, engineers work like hanging out and talking to the tow truck guys, and you know that kind of vibe. Right. And then later on at night, then we have kind of like the, a little bit younger crowd, um, but we definitely have our regulars there. We have, uh, you know, it's basically like tons of musicians, artists, um, anybody of that sort, cooks. All that kind of stuff. Like anybody yeah. who kind of has a craft, you know. Yeah, feels I, was, comfortable here. I was noticing that, like, I, just in a general sense, like this has like a very art. Everything's very art uh, influenced. There's a lot of artists here. Um, I know I hang around here a lot. Uh, I think I have a cot somewhere. You don't know this, but I have a cot in the back. Um, <laughs> but I know, like, uh, other than like you know your shows inside here, you have the backyard shows. Um, I don't know who runs that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, what's cool is since I, like I was saying, we took over the whole space, so yeah. really that's what it is. We try and, um, you know, a few times a month, try and pull together bigger events where, you know, we have something going on inside, we have like certain types of bands going on inside, and we have you know, maybe some acoustic stuff going on in the back, and then upstairs we have an art show, so it's just kind of like, you know, Kind of an adventure being here for a night. You just kind of like check out different things, go back and forth. And, so. and, and uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure that that, uh, that sets you apart from you know other bars. You just kind of want to have that feel for it, you know, very artistic. Well, I think what you know makes a difference is that, like I was saying, you know, it's part of my culture. It's part of my history. So there's maybe like something a little bit more genuine to it, um, and I think people can feel that and notice the difference. 
Um, I think other people maybe try the same thing, but you realize it's just, you know, uh, it's like a money maker. It's like, it's like it feels forced. It feels, yeah, a yeah. bit contrived, yeah. But I think, you know, by, by letting people, you know, sort of express whatever it is that they do here and set up the way they want to, like the upstairs, the artists that come in, I let them paint the walls however they want, I let them put in installations however they want, like, it's totally up to them. So they're, they're creating their space. I'm not dictating how things should be. Um, being a business owner, um, what are the, uh, how, do you, how, did you, how do you get started? Like, what are all the, some of the struggles and, like, of, of course, like, you know, the accomplishments uh, when it comes to like, running a business? Like, how, do you, how do you go about that? Yeah, I mean, it's always, uh, you know, with anything like this, there's a certain amount of risk involved. So you're trying to, it's a leap of faith kind of thing. And, um, you know, you go for it. Um, there's a lot that you got to do, especially in these kind of old buildings. You got to work with the city a lot to sort of make sure they're happy with the city, the fire department, TVC, you know, like all these different organizations that all want things a certain way. And I think really, honestly, the best advice is to just, you know, see them as a partner, not as, you know, this kind of oversight or whatever. Maybe it used to be that way, but you realize that if you work with them, they're actually way more willing to be helpful and actually come down and tell you before you spend a bunch of money on something, whether whether you need it or not, or what's important and whatnot. So that, that, that's how I am with uh, when it comes to like paying my taxes, because I'm just like uh, sometimes I don't, and uh, I've uh, talked to them and they're actually pretty nice. So like uh, at first I was like, I want to talk to you guys. But I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. When it comes to TVC, I definitely recommend paying your taxes. <laughs> it's, a, it's a whole different <laughs> a, yeah. spectrum when it comes to that. Um, what do you, um, how do you, uh, you have a Facebook, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, so we do um, pretty much all of our advertising is through social media. That's uh, something we decided before we even opened was uh, we're going to be very word of mouth based. Um, I feel like that's also how you build a, a genuine sort of customer base or whatever you want to call it. Um, because they're not here because they saw an ad or a billboard or whatever and they were told to come here or they think it's cool or whatever. They're here because somebody else told them or they saw it on somebody else's Facebook page or they started following us on Instagram because of some dumb flyer we put up or whatever, you know? Right. Um, so it has like a very kind of Authentic, word of mouth, DIY kind of feel. So yeah, the people a, that get brought in are usually here because a friend brought them, right. which is a big difference between that and you know just seeing an ad in a magazine and being like, oh, check this place out. It's like it's like Fight Club. It's just like yeah. you know, if you know, you know. Yeah, you know, you're not supposed to talk about Boomtown, but there's like a lot of people here. Shut up! Like, damn it! <laughs> we broke the first rule. Um, so like, uh, how do you, uh, when it comes to like uh, booking shows or like if you want to like hold a special event, like where do they usually like you know get a hold of you? Like, they'll usually just hit me up on Facebook. Either Facebook. either if they know me personally, they'll hit me up personally. If not, they send a message to the Boomtown Facebook page. What, what is the Boomtown Facebook? You know, like a underscore or whatever, and slash. Is it Facebook slash Boomtown? Oh, Facebook slash Boomtown nine one five. Right here. I'm like holding it. Can you, can you see me hold it? It's weird. Go town. Nine one five. How do you how do you get here, man? Where are you? Where are we located? And I know you said we're, you know we're well, in the central, but how do you? Yeah, yeah. I mean that's a little bit like what you were talking about the struggles of opening and all that kind of stuff. I mean that was also kind of a chance we were taking because this is really like a residential like neighborhood bar. You know, it's not in like an entertainment district. It's not in the in the middle of other bars and cafes and all that kind of stuff. So you know. That, I would say, kind of has its pluses and minuses. We're out here on Wyoming and Magnolia. Um, there's there's nothing else like entertainment or service oriented around us. So, like I said, if you're here, it's because you wanted to come here. It's not because you stumbled across us because you were just walking down the street or something. It's like the risk, man. Yeah. It's like a tattoo. You're yeah, here yeah. because you want to be. But what's cool is that you feel that kind of like, little bit of isolation and kind of feels special because, you know, I think a lot of times people are here and then they're hanging out for a couple hours and there's all this stuff going on and then they're in the back and all of a sudden you have that moment where it's like, wait, where am I? You know, you're just kind of like, 
on an island somewhere. Yeah, especially not, if you're you know, not on Main Street. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you already have like 10 beers. You're like, where yeah. am I? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, it, this, it has a, a very intimate feel. I mean, you know, given that it, you know, it used to be home and it has this home right. feel. Um, it does, like, you know, backyards are like, real chill, like, you have your cold beer, like, especially right now with summer nights. Um, it feels it feels like home, you know, it feels like a backyard, it feels like a, like a house. Totally, yeah, and that's really what we wanted to go for. We, at the outset, it was like, we want, like, a cozy, indoor space, and then once we're able to take over the back, we want to leave it really, like, a feeling like you could be in anybody's backyard in Central Union. Right. Um, just, I guess, the final question when it comes to this, uh, Segment. Um, how would you describe, like, in your own words, like how would you describe it? How would I describe it? Um, well, I would describe it probably the way that I describe it on the Instagram, which is a cozy neighborhood bar where cool shit happens. That's that's you can't get any better than that. Yeah. All right, we've reached the point. It's everybody's favorite section or section, whatever. It's the rapid fire questions. Yeah, it's, it's, it's post. It's, it's in post. Yeah, it's totally. They, 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 it's all good. All right. Who's your favorite Spice Girl? I will go. Shit. Um, That's not a Spice Girl. Posh. Posh. All right. Cool. Do you have any pets, and what are their names? No, I don't have any pets at the moment. I actually didn't grow up with this. I had a baby. I mean, I raised a rooster once. That makes sense. I can't tell you the name though, because that's like the answer to all my bank security questions. Oh yeah. We'll get out of it. <laughs> does uh, does Boomtown have a, a tip for shot policy? Like, you do the flashy and then you give the shot thing? Not an official, but I've heard it's happened. Yeah, it's 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 getting there. All right. <laughs> Well, um, I know you, were, you mentioned earlier like uh, you used to live in Berlin. Is that the farthest you've traveled? Uh, no, I would say what's the farthest I've traveled. I'd say Moscow. Moscow. All right, final question. Um, what band? I know we were talking about earlier, like well, this is a kind of like a live music venue or whatever. Uh, what band or artists would you most like to have here in this Portishead? What was Portishead? Portishead. Oh. Thanks, very nice. Sweet. Um, well, that does about uh, wraps it up for the rapid fire. But um, I want to know. Uh, I'm pretty sure, like you know, you were talking about uh, all the people, like the, you know, kind of like helps with this make this possible. Like, is there anybody that sticks out that you want to thank, or you know, anybody that uh, kind of think about? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of groups. Uh, I mean, they all like kind of it's different artist groups that have come through. Uh, you know, Los Dos, Los Visionaries, uh, our good friend uh, Edgar Picasso, he's got a magazine coming out called Azul Arena. And then uh, there's the glass box that's just on the other side of the freeway from us, they're that uh, The Border Theater, uh, we support them, they support us, that kind of thing. Uh, all the local musicians that have played here, uh, all the support we've seen. We also run a music festival called Exit 19. That's together, that's ourselves. The other spot we have Warsaw and Monarch, which is our sister bar, which also shout out to them, of course, all the homies there. Um, but yeah, it's really like the, the artists, the musicians, and you know, everybody who comes out and actually comes and watches live music, we know who you are. And we appreciate you, we love you, keep doing it. Cool man, that's about uh, wraps up the interview. Uh, thank you for having us. Yeah. I mean, well, having us at your awesome bar. Uh, come to Boomtown. It's the place to be. It's always packed here. I've, I've been here several times, but it's always packed. And uh, yeah, man, we uh, thank you for joining us on another edition of Metal Shop Vlogs on the road.